Sorry about that. Okay, lesson three, practice problems. We're going to take a look at a couple practice problems. I think we might do lesson three and four in this video. The first question is a recipe. Recipes are a great way to practice ratios because you always have so many of one ingredient and so many of another ingredient. And if you're trying to enlarge the recipe to make it for more people or even cut the recipe in half, you have to make sure that you maintain that ratio or your recipe will not be correct. Okay, so this spice mix says to combine three teaspoons of mustard seeds and five teaspoons of chili powder and one teaspoon of salt. Okay, so we know we have three mustard seeds, five chili powder, and one salt. Well, if I look here, I have way more than what they're calling for. So I'm gonna circle what I have for each. So here's my three, that's my three mustard seeds, five chili powders. I like how they used red for chili powder. One, two, three, four, five, and one salt. That's a set. So I have three teaspoons of mustard seed, five teaspoon of chili powder, and one teaspoon of salt. Now it's asking me how many batches are represented in this diagram. Well, let's see. I have another three, another group of five, one, two, three, four, five, just counting to make sure I don't miss any, and a group of one, another group of three, another group of five, and a group of one. So we have three batches here. So if I'm making this spice recipe, I am making three batches. So there are three batches here. Three batches of the spice mix. Now, notice that when we increased the number of mu mustard seeds, we increased by groups of three because for every three, you need five chili powder and one salt. So if I were to increase my mustard seed and not my chili powder, it's gonna be off, right? Chili powder is adding the spice, so this it might not be as spicy. And then if I use my mustard seed and my chili powder, but I don't increase in my salt, then it might not be as flavorful, right? So I have to make sure that if I'm increasing the amount of one, I've got to increase the amount of all of them. And each one of those have been multiplied by three. So I've got three groups of this one, three groups of this one, and three groups of this one. All right, Priya makes chocolate milk by mixing two cups of milk and five tablespoons of cocoa powder. Draw a diagram that represents this, but they want us to use make two batches. So what I would recommend is start with one. Okay, so we know we need milk, and you can use shapes or colors. I, if you have colored paper, colored pencils, whatever. I'm just going to put milk first because that's what it tells me. And it's in cups, and I'm going to use one, two, and then I need five tablespoons of cocoa powder. So I'm just going to put cocoa, and then I'm going to put TBL because that's the abbreviation for tablespoons, and I'm going to use circles for that. One, two, three, four. Five. That's a set. Okay, so I have two cups of milk and five tablespoons of cocoa. That's the combination to make my chocolate milk. If I use less cocoa, it's going to be less chocolatey. If I use more milk, it's going to be less chocolatey. If I use less milk, it's going to be more chocolatey, right? So the ratio does matter. All right, so now it says to make two batches. So I'm just going to maybe draw a line and do this one more time. Two cups of milk and five tablespoons of cocoa. That's it. Okay, so you're done. And if you want to write a numeric ratio, we could say two to five, right? So cups of milk, so milk to cocoa is two to five. And we can't simplify that anymore because these are even and this is odd and we can't separate them. So like if I try to make an equal group, I can't. I can't divide by five by two. We could, it would be a decimal, so it would be like two and a half to one, and you could do that. So we could say that the ratio of milk to cocoa is one and two and a half. If I only want one cup of milk, I could technically cut this in half and say two and a half, okay? But for right now, we can stick with whole numbers, and it's okay to say that this is in its simplest form. We can reverse it, and we could say cocoa I always have a hard time spelling the word cocoa. 
to milk. And if we reverse the words, then we reverse the numbers. Five to two. See how that works? All right. Let's see. Let's take a look at lesson four practice problems in this video as well. All right. Here is a diagram that shows the mixture of red paint to green paint needed for one batch of a particular shade of brown. So we know we need three red cups to two green cups. Add to the diagram so that it shows three batches of the same color. So remember, in order to maintain the color, we have to increase both colors by the same rate. We're multiplying by three. Three batches means we need three of them. So I need three more red paint and another set three red paints. And then I need two, two, and two. See how I did that? So I'm increasing my paint by three. So I start it with my one and then multiply by three. Three times three is nine, two times three is six. So we could say that this is a red to green, nine to six, or we could simplify it and say red to green is three to two. Okay, three to two. All right, let's see. Diego makes green paint by mixing 10 tablespoons of yellow paint and two tablespoons of blue paint. Which of these mixtures produces the same shade of green? Okay, so we know we have yellow, 10, and two blue. Okay, so I'm gonna write yellow to blue, and I'm gonna write 10 to two. I could also do blue to yellow, two to 10. Now, before I even look at the multiple choices, do you notice something about two and 10? I can count by twos and land on two. I can also count by twos and land on 10. So I could simplify this as five to one. That would work, or one to five. These are equivalent. They're the same ratio. This would just be two batches. This would be one batch. All right, so let's go ahead and see if we can find some answers. For every five tablespoons of blue paint, mix in one tablespoon of yellow. Hmm, nope, it's the other way around. So this one they're trying to trick you. It should be five tablespoons of yellow for one blue. So we don't want that one. Okay, mix tablespoons of blue paint and yellow paint in the ratio of one to five. Blue to yellow, one to five. Blue to yellow, one to five. That's a winner. Okay, that's a winner. All right, mix tablespoons of yellow paint and blue paint in the ratio of 15 to three. Yellow and blue, 15 to three. Well, I don't have that one over here. Yellow to blue, 15 to three. I'm gonna write that yellow to blue, 15 to three. Well, if the original ratio, yellow to blue is five to one, do you see something here related? Five to 15, one to three. Can I count by fives and land on 15? Times three. Look at that, and I can do the same thing to this one, times three. That means I made three batches of the paint. So if but one batch of the paint, or half a batch of the paint is five to one, if I increase that by three, that means I have 15 to three. So that will work, because these are equivalent ratios. How do I know they're equivalent in ratios? Well, if I count by fives, I can land on 15 at the same rate as if I count by ones and land on three. One times three is three, five times three is, or five times three is 15. All right, Ooh. mix 11 tablespoons of yellow and three tablespoons of paint. Well, the last I checked, you can't count by three and land on 11. And I don't think you can count by fives and land on yet an 11. So that one's out, okay? That one won't work. That will not make the same shade, okay? We, we're looking at multiples of five um, and three. All right, for every teaspoon or tablespoon of blue paint, mix in five yellow uh, tablespoons of yellow, okay? So blue to yellow, one to five. We have that one up here. Blue to yellow, one to five. That will work. 
All right, so A and D are out. Everything else will work. All right, last one. Claire mix is making sky blue paint, and she has to combine two cups of blue paint with one white to lighten it up, okay? So our ratio is blue to white, two to one. Okay, see how I'm writing the ratio? That way I have it. Okay, explain how Claire can make two batches. Well, all she has to do is double both numbers, double both. Okay, so two batches means we need to double the amount of both paints. So if it calls for two blue, that would be four, and if it calls for one white, that would be two. So we would say blue to white would be four to two. Okay, I doubled both. Explain how to make a mixture that is a darker shade of blue than sky blue. Well, if we want a darker shade, we'll either take away some of the white or add more blue. And this is kind of an open-ended question because you could do either. We could cut the white in half, right? That would, that would make it darker or increase the cups of blue. Okay, either one of those would work. So if we mess with this ratio by adding less white or more blue, we'll get a darker shade. Now, lighter, what would we do for lighter? Add more white, right? Add more white or take out some of the blue. So maybe cut out some of the blue or add white. Okay? So again, ratios are fun. In order to maintain the ratio though, you have to make sure that you're increasing the colors by the same rate. So if we're making two batches, then we multiply by two, both numbers. If we're making three batches, we would do two, four, six, one, two, three, and we would say six to three. Okay, so if we don't, then we're gonna have a different shade of blue, which is fine. But remember, that would mean we're not keeping with the same ratio of the original sky blue. All right, more ratios coming up next.